Chemicals. I need ventilation. I know this stuff. It's okay. You could have made a fortune as a con man. I do deals, that's all. Never done one with a customs officer. No, I haven't tried that lot yet. I only deal with the free trade area. Trade seems to be looking up, Brent. Well, it's about time, isn't it? Didn't you hear? Oxfam are raising funds for us in India. down to Dr. Vickers is an appeal on compassionate grounds. Yes, madam. What you're asking this court to accept is that because your child is subject to this alleged chest condition... She has you... bronchial asthma. Well, one expert witness has told us that her condition is not serious and she can be treated just as well here as anywhere else. The expert witness is a medical officer with the Public Control Department. He has a vested interest. My child would be better off in Arizona. And so would you. Well, isn't that so? I would be better off if my child were well. And you would be at least five times better off in salary. Look, I thought this was an ombudsman's court. I thought this was a citizen's court where one could come as a last resort in cases like mine. Within the law, Dr. Vickers. Don't forget this country saw you through your training as a doctor and you signed an agreement to work here for at least ten years after qualifying. Tina wasn't even born when I signed that. Do please try to control yourself, Dr. Vickers. We are trying to be fair. They're getting out. They're getting out. It's like a scheduled service. Kyle and his paper will be calling it the Great Exodus before long. Look at it. You'd think he was the greatest scientist since Einstein, the way they're playing him up. And all he was was a third-rate nuclear engineer. He signed Form P-17 and he's making us look like incompetence. Let's tighten up our port controls, shall we? I doubt if Skoll's got out through one of my ports. Sea or air. When I was a kid, they're all trying to get into this country. Africans, Asians... Now even some of their kids are trying to get out. You know, it comes to something when Jack and his emigration officers are being made a target for the Race Relations Board. All that matters is that we seal those bolt holes. Otherwise, the Home Secretary is going to have my guts for starters. I've heard about his food fights. He may have been weaned on fish and chips deli and on tripe and onions with the Union, but he's a bon viveur now. Anyway, never mind about the menu. Except for the cheese in our mouse traps. We've given careful thought to your appeal, Dr. Vickers. Uh, anything you'd like to add before we give our decision? What I've said about my daughter's health should be ample. We have immense sympathy with you, Dr. Vickers. We believe, however, that your child's health condition does not constitute grounds for the issue of an exit visa to you. We are prepared to issue your child a visa so that she may be treated in a more congenial climate. And break up my family. We must remind you, you signed Form P-17, binding you to work here for at least 10 years after qualifying. We must reject your appeal. This court will resume at uh, 14.30. <coughs> I thought he had a bit of a case. An excuse, no more. You're surely not going to splash this all over page one tomorrow. No, 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 no. Twelve lines at the most, inside page. Not worth more. If that. Don't tell me you swallowed his yarn. Oh, no, none of us did. We're all conditioned now, Delhi. 
Oh, I hear that you're going to need a lot more of these ombudsman's courts. I'm sorry? I hear you're getting over 500 exit visa applications every week. You do hear some funny things. <laughs> well, there are some funny things going on. You can't run a rumour like that. 500 a week? That's 26,000 a year. And that's only the front runners. Those who reach the ombudsman's court. Every single one of them trying to get out. To line their pockets. Oh, yes, yes. Selfish people, all 26,000 of them. You could help us quite a bit. They're still getting out of the country. Yes, I do read the foreign press, don't I? The Americans and some of our European partners are making quite a thing today about that uh, nuclear engineer. Oh, yes, Scholes. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, I, was in, I was in court when his appeal was turned down. Feeble-looking bloke, I thought. Surprised that he swam all that way. You were the one who got onto the Devon racket. Delhi. Those yachtsmen were getting people out in appalling conditions at 20,000 Anglo dollars per person per trip. And they were making a fortune out of human misery. They were spiriting out illegal immigrants under our noses. Well, Scarden says you were onto them anyway. Were we? Hmm? You know, Scarden's made a Whitehall career out of claiming other people's successes as his own. <laughs> I reckon you hate your boss almost as much as Greaves and I hate ours. Toss you for who hates the mostest. I don't suppose your digging has got you any nearer to the gang who got skulls out. Make me sound like a mole, Deli. You do go underground for long spells. Oh, I see your people resent my having a private life now, do they? They feel humiliated when you keep dodging them. <laughs> we know you pick up official secrets from civil servants, especially the faceless one in my own department. Faceless? Oh, what a sweet name. It's all part of your departmental neurosis, Deli. I'll tell you what, you have only to say the word and it's on. I mean, I could go underground with you for a whole month and still come back for more. Don't you be so sure. Tina, this way. Tina. Look at him. Even a year ago, there'd have been 50 on The press was over now. One more door, speakers. One more. So what have we got now? Three daily papers, one of those state run. Two Sundays. All the other journalists working for foreign agencies, all pouring out stories about poor old Britain with its identity cards, its ration books, and its bully boy bureaucrats. Will you help us or not? What is the betting the British Gazette will make that man look like some rapist with toothache? You are in a mood. It's your court, Delhi. It's your bloody court. Gives me a longing for fresh air. You will help us, though. Well, I'll help you, Delhi. I know you've had a wasted morning, Kyle. There won't be many more. The Home Secretary is going to abolish all exit visa appeals. Not only did they keep the poor devil here and make him look like a train robber, they touch up the kid's picture and make her look as fit as a Russian athlete. Tiny, tiny, careless talk. Are we debugged? State run rag. <laughs> they should be prosecuted as con men. I can see the government cutting our state advertising yet. Eh, uh, not our newsprint ration? Oh, not that. Not yet, anyway. 26,000 annually trying to get out. Is that a fact? That's a fact. Whew. I can see today they'll have to requisition every single hotel bedroom in London as courtroom. No, no, no. They'll find an easier way. Huh? They'll announce a blanket no to all exit visa appeals on all TV channels. With the Home Secretary telling the nation what a... Disloyal, a lot of silly billies they all are for wanting to get out. You know, I can't make you out. Half the time you plug the public control department's lousy handouts and the rest of the that time... That is the half of me, Tiny, that is the good citizen. And the other half? I put bombs under them. It's the bombs I like. Oh. You know, I do wish they'd stop doing this to me. <laughs> I mean, really, it's such a waste of time, isn't it? Here, I'll take it. No, 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 no. Who's covering the Home Secretary's press briefing? Uh, I thought you were. Oh, it's a whitewashed chat. I've got better things to do. Oh, he'll miss you. He'd better. I know. Let's send Norton. Right. Where's his coat? By the door, on the left.
What I'm saying is that some papers have been put in our lies about a responsible body of men and women who are now a vital part of the public service. I refer to the inspectors of culture. Where's Kyle? They pose no threat to the liberal arts. None to writers, none to artists, none to the drama. He's certainly not here. here Find out where he is. To see that the state does its duty as a patron of the arts. What exactly are their duties, Home Secretary? Kyle, please. Uh, he's green today. Oh, he's not far from here. Right here. In the Home Office, I'd say. Yes, he's on the premises. Here among us. He's at the Home Secretary's media briefing. Oh, no, he's not. That's the one place I know he isn't. Now, these sets don't lie, Mr. Tasker. We really are at the end of the road when you blokes suspect the state even when it brings in the most progressive measures to improve the quality of life. Improve or control, Home Secretary? Couldn't this new inspectorate, these new inspectors of culture, be no more than the censors? I can tell what paper you come from. <laughs> he's supposed to be here, in this room. Well, he's not, is he? I'm sure some of you who are now so sensitive about liberty wouldn't be quite so free to ask questions if the army had taken over four years ago as they tried to. Home Secretary, you can hardly call two generals and one dotty air marshal a junta. I mean, all they did was to meet secretly in a club for geriatric generals. <laughs> Some putsch. Goodbye, Wendy. Come in. Ah, oh, Mr. Grant, I haven't seen you before, have I? Well, no, I'm, uh, I'm not normally ill. But you think you are now? Yes. Yes, I think I've got a rupture. Well, let's have a look. Yes, you do have a rupture. It's very slight. Slight? What do you mean slight? Listen, it's giving me hell. And besides which, I'm, uh, I'm getting these pains around the heart, you see. Take your shirt off. Well, your heart rate seems quite normal, Mr. Grant. Oh? Well, not when I'm working, it's not. Look, I'm not here just to dole out sickness benefits, Mr. Grant. Listen, I'm no scrounger, you know. I mean, I'm not scared of hard work. The thing is, I'd just like to feel fit enough to get back on the job, you know. I'd go back to work tomorrow. Yes, well, you can have the rest of this week off, Mr Grant, and then it's back to work for you. Oh, does that mean that there's, uh, there's nothing wrong with my heart? There's a murmur, but there's nothing to worry about. It's quite normal. I will not be a party to parasitism. I will not condone the work shy. Uh, can I put my shirt back on now, Doctor? Yes, you can get dressed now, Mr. Grant. Ombudsman's Court, Emigration Rejects. Surname? Vickers, Dr. Vickers. And we've got just over 600 of those on our list today. Monitor 9. Are they still staking him out? No, electronic surveillance only. They were called to other things yesterday after four days. Channel 14, I'll punch it up. They're our second busiest classification nowadays. A long way, though, behind the dissidents who just want to stay here and make a nuisance of themselves. And your doctor is Amber. Coventry. Coventry Southwest. On the Castle Housing Estate. That's where he should be, that's where his patients are. He's on the move. Oh, he'll be doing his visiting. I thought he was on Miss Lomas's list. And on mine. I have the authority. Yes, indeed, Mr. Tasker. If you'd like a more precise fix on it. No, thank you. It's fine. Dr. Vickers? Yes. Hello. 
There's someone I'd like you to meet. So, um, take that to your car, put it in, and lock it. Right, check your pockets. Thoroughly. Nothing, no bugs? No. Nope. Right, let's see your watch. Right. He's fine. I'll question you for an hour. And you still want to go out? Yes. You sure as you were last time we met? You seem somewhat doubtful. How can I be sure that they won't hold my wife and child here to try and force me back? Doctor, because we still live under the rule of law, even if some of those laws are lousy. Once you're out, they can detain your family for no more than a month under the European Convention. The European Convention says that people must be allowed to move freely across frontiers. Yeah, well, the government falls loopholes in that. The country can't afford to lose any more people like you, Doctor. They might find a way of keeping my wife and child here. Well, nothing sure these days, is it? You can't turn a tide. Tide? Not a tide. Not a bunch of hooligan bureaucrats just roughing the waters a little. Anyway, it's up to you. Any time you can fix it. Just give it a few days, until they're used to the idea that you've accepted your lot. Don't change your routine. Just look resigned and sad. I feel resigned and sad. You can't go telling millions of readers that all our best professional talent is queuing for exit visas. 26,000 appeals a year. Who drip feeds you this poison? Trumped up figures. Then deny them. I'm sure the British Gazette will give you loads of space tomorrow, and of course all the TV networks. You still have them? Hmm. They are cancer-proof, you know. <laughs> Who put that out? The State Tobacco Corporation or the Treasury? So I do know that your Treasury boys are very worried about the fall in tobacco tax revenues. You're a cynic, Kyle. You won't believe the facts we give you. You make up your own and go shouting them from the rooftops. I didn't make up 26,000 exit visa appeals. Somebody did. Well, what do you want me to do, Mr. Scarden? Show you a copy of a memo from your own office? Please. And then you'd have me in jail under the Official Secrets Act. You never seem to know where you stand. I mean, half the time you help us put over exactly the things people should know. You did more than any other media person to try and explain what we're doing about curbing the birth rate, policing the wealth tax, neither of no, them... No, 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 don't let that fool you. I don't like sterilisation any more than I like your zealous lads ripping up people's floorboards looking for gold sovereigns. You mustn't be so squeamish, Kyle. I mean, we don't like your unofficial contacts with this department. We don't like... What's his name? Faceless. But we do believe there's hope for you yet. <laughs> steady on, steady on. You'll have me in the next honours list with my ration of happiness pills. That's not been approved yet. Next year. 
the year after. As a matter of fact, you know, it's the misery pills that really bother me. I mean, jail's bad enough without dishing out that trash to the prisoners. It's just a way of reducing prison sentences. Now, which would you prefer? Six months or one on misery pills? Well, doubtless I'll have to make that decision myself soon. You, uh, recall your story on the Devonshire yachtsmen smuggling out illegal emigrants. Now, that was a public service. But I, th I thought you were onto them. Indeed, I was. So you said. You knew I was. Anyway, you got your headlines. Never mind, you'll get the pension. I was going to take you to lunch today, but the Home Secretary needs someone to vent his sadism on. Worry not. Yes, Mr. Scarden. Delhi, I don't know if you have a lunch date, but if you do, ditch him. You're lunching with Kyle, if you don't mind. I ditch Mr. Universe for Kyle. <laughs> well, I, I, I take that as a compliment, Delhi. Did you know I was here? I knew. In that case, who's paying? I am. Well, surely that contravenes the Sex Discrimination Reform Act, doesn't it? <laughs> well, you pay then. I'll not feel humiliated. Put it down to expenses, Delhi. Lucky you. She'll tell you what it's all about. Yeah. No new establishments you're not aware of, I assure you. Well, you wouldn't show the first concentration camp on there anyway, would you? Oh, yes. This is another one of yours, I believe. She's taking him to the Trattoria. I don't want him lost for a minute. Will she rebug him? I doubt it. She might, but I doubt it. I want him marked, Tasker. One or two of your best men, not a regiment. Some MPs are already saying we're overmanned as hell. It's time we did something about them, then. About our blokes? About those MPs. Oh, we're listing them, Tasker. Have no worry. Kyle, please. Uh, he's not on the list today. He's with Delhi Lomas. He'll show up on her signal. Oh. Hey? Hmm? That restaurant's not in Regent's Park. There's nothing wrong with the set. Do your wife and kids ever see you? Well, I try to make it Christmas Day. Pancake Tuesday, for the kids' sake. And your wife? A very tolerant lady. Don't try and kid me, Deli. Your bloodhounds could make that computer cough up a complete dossier on all my visits home. I reckon it could even spout out nursery rhymes and fairy stories that I used to tell the kids before I learned to debug the house. <laughs> Do you know that your pension hunting wires even bugged our bedroom? Don't blame me for everything the department gets up to. You make a superb omelette, Deli. And it's no use doing that. Well, never mind. Always think it wise to knock before entering. Oh, that was good. Right. Now, why the hospitality? No comment. Well, for one thing, we'd like to know how you came by all those crazy figures in today's paper. Though one may as well ask a brick wall who built it. <laughs> I don't mind telling you where those figures came from. They tumbled out of a civil service computer. They tumbled out of someone's mouth. <laughs> I never thought there was any point in asking you. It was Scarden's idea, and as you know, he's not the greatest brain around. Oh, I say careful, careful, careful. No bugs here. We thought you'd like to know that 120 people a week are leaving Britain illegally. 
120. Mm, that all. It's 120 too many. They're people we need. Doctors, scientists. Artists, writers. You know very well, Kyle. They can leave when they like. Oh, yes, I know. I mean, you're only too happy to see them go. 120 a week, eh? Well, that's about one in four of those making appeals. On your figures. They're obviously buying their way out. You did say you'd help me. See what I can dig up? We'd appreciate it. Some Matahari you are. It's all in poor Scarden's mind. He's not good enough. Oh, no. Not you, head of the PCD. Why not? It's 1990. Oh, and in case your next appointment is personal, Scarden has his bloodhounds outside. Why tip me off? I expected you to know anyway. We need each other, Kyle. Your phone tap like mine? Possibly. I can't be sure about the phone tapping. Yes? Hi, uh, Kyle. Uh, yes. Yes, Tony. I am at Delhi Lomas's place in Regent's Park. Uh, we have the address and the telephone number on our PCD list. Yes? I need column five. Column five? Tony, I need column five urgently. OK, we'll keep it open. Do you mind if I open another bottle? Tommy. Uh, Many out there? Yeah, there's three up the front and two down by the fire escape. Right. Dillian, we are going to take our trousers off. Can you stand the shock or shall we do it in the bathroom? <laughs> oh, no, carry on. Tommy, trousers off. Anywhere special you want me to lead him? How about hell? You got through the fire escape. I was going to. Surprised. Hmm? You let me see how it was done. Well, that's only one of the ways that I uh, I dodge your goons. Probably won't use it again anyway, so it doesn't matter. First time I was off. So that's column five. It was. <clears throat> well, I've no doubt that you'll tip off your mates the minute I leave this flat, but it doesn't really matter because I'll lose them anyway. And then write some more about the overmanning of our surveillance branch. Very likely. They haven't forgotten you called them pigs in print. Yeah. Libel on a noble animal makes one want to turn vegetarian. I'll give you soya bean chops next time. How do you look like you do? And do the job that you do? Carl? Yeah. You can use that trick again, you know. As long as you give me everything you get on the emigration racket. Me, not Scarden. You know, Delhi, ambition becomes you. I could kiss you for it. 
Likely, then. Give my regards to Faceless. Who says I'm going to see him? Or her? A bit late, sorry. Rumour has it you were having it off with a lady from the public control department. No, 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 no. All I was having was an omelette. Right, Dr. Vickers, no problems? Thursday. <clears throat> Can get five more out besides him. I've seen the immigration officer's duty roster. Bring Clover, Thursday and next Tuesday. We've got five more ready. Are some of the other groups are ready. I know Cardiff's got a queue and so is Manchester. Well, vetted and ready to go. No, no, no. I know they're not ready to link up yet. I don't know enough about them. So we check away valuable freight space. You can take six, you say? For sure. And what's all this costing us? Not as much as you think. You'd be surprised how many do it for love. <laughs> oh, come on. Stop it. You're going to make me cry, aren't you? Well, anyway, let's concentrate on Vickers first. I want him to know exactly what he's doing. If he wants any family goodbyes, they better drop into the health centre casually. I don't want him going home before he comes here. You know, we might be able to pick up five more from tomorrow's courts. Well? Very good. Splendid. Delhi? It's a start. It's the breakthrough. It's what we need. I've been after this bunch for months. I'd not be surprised if the Home Secretary won't want to announce this personally at a press conference. Why don't you let Kyle have the story exclusive? So? I'm inclined to agree with Belly. Very well. Let's have Kyle brought in again. Wouldn't it be better if I leaked it to him privately? We do see your problem. Your wife is German and has returned there. But marital separation is not acceptable under the law for your being excused your commitments. You sign Form P-17. Your training as an aerospace designer was costly. This court hopes you can persuade your wife to rejoin you here. We must dismiss your appeal. Carol Harper? Yes, ma'am. I see you are a biochemist working on clinical research. Yes, that's right. Uh, your appeal is against the Public Control Department's refusal to grant you an exit visa for postgraduate studies abroad. Yes. You are aware that in these critical times there is a quota to limit the number of those who wish to pursue postgraduate studies abroad? You are probably not aware that the quota for 1990 has already been exceeded. Those who've been granted visas have been security vetted and have given solemn undertakings that they will return to this country the minute their training is finished. What's the idea of luring me away from my favorite bullring? I was going to give you an exclusive. Well, give it to me. I love the sound of your voice. I'd rather talk elsewhere, my flat tonight. What time? 7.30. Gives you time to get me dinner. It gives you time to write a story. Tonight's for my kids. It's two exclusives you're coming for. One for tomorrow, the other for the day after. You know, I think you must be secretly in love with me or something. It's all something. Well, if this place is bugged, you're the one who's going to be spilling all the official secrets. I've told you the flat's debugged. I'm not only up to date in bugging techniques, 
Pretty nancy bugging techniques. Yeah. It's a bit much, isn't it? Inflation-proof pensions and bug-proof flats. Who else in this country could live in such privacy? You don't do so badly. That's only because I make sure. Right, Dilly. <laughs> Deadlines on the independent papers get earlier. Your works relations inspector see to that. Gives the Gazette an advantage. I know your deadlines. You have another two hours. I give you one exclusive for tomorrow and another for the day after. You run them in the order I say. I don't write to orders from civil servants, Delhi, not even super ones with sexy mouths. Right, then drink up. I give the stories to somebody else. It's a deal. Look at these. That lot have been getting out illegal emigrants from Liverpool. At least 20 a week over the past year. That's bad. That's very bad. Uh, did, did you catch them all? Mm-hmm. They'll be tried the day after tomorrow. And what do you think they'll get? What, five years? Well, three of them will. Two should get off with treatment. <laughs> well, perhaps they prefer Dartmoor to treatment. Perhaps. I'll give you the details, but not on tape. That's your first story, is it? For publication what's tomorrow. What's your second story? I'll give you that tomorrow, after that one's appeared. There's no need to look at me like that. Story number one puts Scarden on a pedestal. Story number two kicks it from under him just when he's taking his bow. And crash he goes in the Whitehall ratings. Wouldn't you like to see me in his chair, Kyle? Ah, oh, there you are. Good stuff, this, about that Liverpool lot. Makes my ulcers play up. Yeah, well, I can't give you any happiness pills. That might help. It's tomorrow's copy. Illegal immigrants get out on package tours. <laughs> Poetry. It's beautiful. <laughs> I like it, I like it. <laughs> you know, Kyle, your sense of timing's almost perfect. Perhaps you should join the State Theatre. Well, it's just one of nature's gifts. <laughs> You've either got it or you haven't, no. Our Liverpool coup undone at a stroke. Here they all are, following Kyle's story about the Liverpool arrests, and he has to come out with his bilge about illegal emigrants getting out as unskilled workers on package holidays. It makes us look like a pack of idiots. At least the only money they were able to take out was the holiday allowance. That's a great consolation. They're out, Tasker. They've got out. I want to know who gave Kyle today's story. I intend to find out. Don't you worry, Denny. This is my department. It makes us look stupid. It makes me look stupid. You have 9,000 emigration officials, Nichols, and it's my bet it's one of them who's blabbed. There's not a shred of proof it's one of my men. Work on Kyle, Delhi. I want to know where he gets this garbage. I want him put in line. I'll call him now. That might not be so easy. Hmm? I checked in at the locations room on the way here. He went off their screen an hour ago. Okay, gently. All right. Trouble. Huh? They've changed the jury roster. Goldman's been sent to check some yacht in Chichester. Well, let's get it back in the van. Don't get me time. The other one's not with us. No. Oh. Chemicals, they need ventilation. I know this stuff. It's okay. Open it up. 
Oh, come on. I know it. It's okay. 99 out of 100 usually are. Open it up. These chemicals shouldn't be exposed to the weather. And yet they need air. Open it. Oh, come on, Bill. Take my word for it. And you can put that away. Less than a week after his appeal's turned down, Vickers turns up in Arizona. We have all this sentimental hogwash. All these international do-gooders threatening to go to the Human Rights Commission in Geneva unless we let out his wife and child immediately. The Yanks on at us. The French. The Germans. But when even the Russians join in the damn chorus, with their record, it's got to stop. Vickers claims three others got away with him. This country's like a sieve and the Home Secretary won't put up with much more of it, I can tell you. Then he must approve an increase in our establishment. That's mischievous. You know he's already accused me of empire building. Then he should improve the quality. I intend to check on this Vickers case myself. Yeah? Charles? Yes? You. Carl here. Who's that? Never mind. But if you want some interesting copy, I'll be at Crossover Comprehensive School Playground around 2.30. Can you tell me why? You got a time and place? Yes, yes. Friend or foe? Won't know till 2.30. I'll not be long, Tina. You do realise you're trespassing, Carl. This is public property. Well, public can be very private sometimes, can't it? Especially with your lot. And men who fancy schoolgirls are liable to arrest. <laughs> I don't fancy schoolgirls, Dilly. I fancy grown-up, ambitious, lady civil servants who work for the anti-freedom business. Because I do realise that these days even saying that leaves me liable to arrest. Not if you keep your hands off me. Oh, don't worry, Dilly. I won't touch you without asking you first. What were you asking her? I'm sorry? Vickers, child. I am with the Home Office, Kyle. Agreed. We are responsible for child welfare. Especially when the father's gone abroad. She's vulnerable. Oh, come off it, Delhi. You're not with the Child Welfare Inspectorate, you are with the Public Control Department. And you're very high up in the Public Control Department. Tina and her mother will be allowed out in a month. You are so right. Indeed they will. 
Otherwise, the world might want to know why. Of course, your lot can always be guaranteed to change the rules. We don't make the laws, we only carry them out. Is that what they're going to be taught to say? The first intake of your public control department concentration camp guards, is that what they're going to be taught to say? We don't make the laws, mate. We just carry them out, and then they put the boot in. I mean, just who are you recruiting for your adult rehabilitation centres? What did you ask Tina just now? When did you last see your father? What I discussed with the child is no matter for the media. I'll ask her myself. Kyle. Don't you think she's gone through enough? Whoever tipped you to come here was out to damage me. I suppose it's no use asking who it was. Did you really ask her, when did you last see your father? Not quite like that. Or much like that. You plan to run a story on this? No, no, not yet. Not yet. I'm like your lot. I'm building up dossiers. Thank you.